Hello, developers and architects. I'm sure there's one thing that I can guarantee is that you all want performant applications. And if you're anything like me, there's some pretty common bottlenecks you find in many applications, one of which typically being the database. It's the database causing the bottleneck. It's the database where everything starts to slow down. Maybe it doesn't scale well. Maybe it just doesn't perform well. And that is where caching can be your friend. Caching allows you to store data in a non-persistent location that is much more performant from a read perspective. This also allows you to protect your main database as your application scales. Did you know that Cloudflare have a caching service that you can use inside your serverless applications running on Cloudflare? That is the KV service. And that's what you're gonna learn about in this video, how you can quickly and easily add a cache to your applications running on Cloudflare using the KV service and Rust. Excited? I am. Let's get into it. So let's start looking at how you can actually implement a cache on Cloudflare. And of course, to start with, you need to create the cache itself. Now, all the code samples you're going to see in this video, the linked in the description, this is all available on GitHub. This is a chat room application that you can use to log in and register and create chats and chat with your friends. And many of the resources inside Cloudflare are supported using Terraform. So you can use infrastructure as code to create all of these additional resources alongside your application, caches being one of them things. So inside the infra folder, inside the main.tf file, you'll see that I'm creating a Cloudflare Workers KV namespace. It's this namespace construct that allows you to control different caches. Maybe you've got different applications that only a different cache for some reason. So we're gonna create the cache and we're gonna call that cache Rusty Serverless. When you actually run a Terraform apply inside that folder, passing in a set of variables that are needed, things like API keys and things like that. When I actually deploy this, this is going to give me back a ID. The ID of the KV namespace that's been created inside Cloudflare. You see, I've got that here, I've got the name, I've got the KV binding ID there, and also the name of the binding. Now this is the first, now, if this is your first time watching any of these Cloudflare videos, all of the integrations between workers and all the other services work with what's called bindings. So if you grab that KV binding ID there and you come back to your application code. Now, inside this application, there's a SQLite database, a D1 database, storing all of the metadata related to the chats themselves. So when you log into the application and you create a new chat room, that's all stored in a SQLite database. But of course, you might want that retrieval of the chats to be really performant. When a user logs in, they want to see all of the available chats really quickly. So that's where you're going to implement this caching inside the backend application. And if you go and have a look at the wrangler.toml, this is where you create the binding. So inside this toml file, you can say, I want a binding called chat cache, and I want to bind that to the ID of the namespace that's just been generated, which is obviously already in there. Now inside your application code, you can just access this binding. And because you've got this set up here, your application will have permissions to access the cache. You can also inside this wrangler.toml file, specify different values for different environments. So here I've got a staging environment called Rushdie Chatroom Staging. And here I'm using the same namespace ID. Obviously you could pass in a different namespace ID. This will allow you to, when you deploy to staging, use one cache. When you deploy to production, use another cache. So there are primarily two types of caches you will often see in the world. There are read through caches and write ahead caches. Two different ways of managing caching. You're gonna have a look at both of them in this video now. And let's start with a read through cache. How exactly does a read through cache work? So imagine a request comes into your application and it hits your application here. The first thing your application is going to do is it going to check to see if the value exists in the cache. If it doesn't, obviously your application is then going to go and need to hit the actual database itself. So now your application is going to read the data from the database. Database is going to respond with some values and with a read through cache, at the point of read, you're then going to update the value in the cache. So now the cache has been updated with the value and the response goes back to your user. What this will typically mean if you implement a read through cache is that whenever your database is actually accessed, this is going to be slightly slower than just reading directly from your database because of course you need to write the value to the cache. However, when the next request comes in, we have another request coming in now for the same data. 
that's then going to hit the cache. And this time the cache is going to respond with some data because the value is now in the cache and that cache value is going to go back to your users. So with a read through cache, whenever your database is actually queried, your responses are going to be slower. But of course, you hope that your cache is accessed more often than not. So let's actually have a look at how this would be implemented inside Cloudflare Workers. In the backend application code, all of the chats, all of the chat data is managed in this chats.rs file. Inside this chats.rs, you've got this chat repository. And you'll notice this chat repository, when it's created, takes in this KV store. This is a struct that comes from the workers RS crate. And this is how you would actually access the cache. If you go and have a look at the lib.rs, this is where the, this is the actual startup code for your worker you see you're reading this cache binding. So the environment of the worker, I can do m.kv, I want a kv binding called chat cache. And then I'm gonna map the error to see if the cache doesn't actually exist, if the binding doesn't exist. Then I've got my cache and I can create a new instance of the chat repository passing in that cache binding. And you see that if this is your first time seeing Cloudflare and binding, it's incredibly simple to access your infrastructure, you are in essence just accessing your cache as an environment variable. Cloudflare handles the rest behind the scenes. It's a really cool way of doing IAM and doing access control. And your actual application code is going to call this list all chats function. This is to get a list of all the currently active chats in the chat room. And the first thing this list all chats function is going to do is it's going to make a call to self.cache.get and it wants to get all of the values under the chats key. That self.cache.get is going to return a result. If that result has a value, so I'm going to match on the cache chats. If there is a value inside the chats, it's a cache hit. And I can just return the value of that cache. You can see here that this will automatically deserialize the data from the cache. And I can pass in a type there. This is going to be a vector of chat DTO structs. However, if the cache doesn't work for whatever reason, there's a failure accessing the cache or the data is not found in the cache, then you're going to call this list from DB function. Remember, if you think back to the diagram, we're now in this section here. There's been a failure accessing the data from the cache for some reason. So now we're actually going to go off and hit the database. That means you're going to call this list from DB function. And the list from DB function is going to actually make the query to the database, as you might expect. It's going to log that this is a cache miss. And then we're going to make the query to the database. Now, this is where things get important when you're building a read through cache, because if the data is successfully read from the database, as it is here, then you're going to make a call to self.cache.put using that same key, the chats string, and you're actually going to put the DB result into the cache. So when the data is retrieved, you are then going to store that in the cache. Now, if you weren't doing a read through cache, of course, that code wouldn't run and your code would be as performant as it takes to access the database. Because you've got this call to the cache, this is going to add a little bit of overhead to your overall response. Typically, most caching technologies, particularly KV on Cloudflare, this adds single digit, double digit milliseconds to your response time. So it's negligible, but it is there. You'll also notice I'm setting a TTL here. I only want the data to be in the cache for up to 60 seconds. After 60 seconds, I want it to be deleted from the cache. And then the next call that comes in is going to obviously go and access the database. So that covers a read through cache. What about a write ahead cache? So a write ahead cache functions slightly differently. Imagine this time the request comes into your application, but this time the request is to create a new chat. So instead of getting data here, this is when someone is going to create a chat. And at this point, obviously the write is going to go through your database. And at the point the record is created in the database, you're also going to update your cache at the same time, right ahead, because you're writing to your cache ahead of time. That means when a read request comes in for the same data, you can then go off to the cache, retrieve the data, return to the user. So you're writing to the cache ahead of time. How this would look inside Cloudflare here, when instead of doing the list from chats call, when a add chat call is happened, this is inside the chat repository. There's the code here to create the data in the database. As you might expect, you're going to insert the chat into the chat database. And then here you would actually do a self.cache.put and you would put the data into the cache. Now you'll notice that I'm not doing that here. Here I'm doing a self.cache.delete, which 
almost seems like the opposite of what you might expect, right? We're here to build a write ahead cache, not a delete cache. Because when a chat is created, I am creating an individual chat. But what I want to store in the cache is a list of all the chats. So if I was to build a write ahead cache here, you would need to make a second call to the database. After doing the insert of a single chat, you would then need to do a select all chats and insert all of them into the cache. So instead, whenever a chat is added or equally whenever a chat is deleted, I'm going, you're going to clear the cache. You're going to invalidate the cache manually. That means when a next get request comes in, you will then get the most up-to-date data from the database and write that to the cache. Equally, you could here write some code that does um, self.list all chats, limit of 100. You could actually make the call there to list all the chats. And then instead of doing a self.cache.delete, you could do a self.cache.put and actually update the chats there. So you could actually make this work. You could make that list all call to your database and then update the cache in real time. But here I'm choosing just to delete the cache. I'm going to invalidate the cache whenever any data changes. So when that next request comes in, it's going to actually access the data success. So let's actually see this in action now. If I come over to the UI and I'm going to log in to the chat interface, and then currently there are no chats. There's no active chats at the minute. If you go and have a look at the logs, I've started a log stream inside the Cloudflare UI so I can actually see the logs. Here I will get a message saying cached chats found, but this was a cache miss. There was some kind of error inside the cache. This was a cache miss. Data was actually read from the database. If I now go and create a new chat, and we'll call that hello YouTube, create a chat, that's going to automatically drop me into the actual chat room. If I leave the room, I can see a list of all my active chats. The chat I've just created called hello being one of them. Back to my log, I will now have a new log message in my log stream. And again, this was a cache miss, as you might expect, because I've created a chat that's then invalidated the cache. Now, if I hit this page again, though, if I refresh the page, that's going to do one more read. There should be one more request in my logs now. And you would expect this to be a cache hit. That last record, that last bit of data was read from the cache, not from the database. To see that again, if I create another new chat, new chat, leave the room. When I create the chat, remember, that's going to invalidate the cache. Leave the room. I see both of my records. Come back to my log stream. And inside the logs, I've got a cache miss again. So you can see the caching in action now. One thing you will notice that there isn't really a perceptible performance difference when there's a cache hit and a cache miss. Because of the way the D1 database service works inside Cloudflare, the performance is pretty damn incredible, which makes caching not really that useful in this scenario. It is almost just as performant to go directly to the database. However, this is simply a demonstration of how you can add caching to your applications running on Cloudflare. Really simply, Use Terraform to create the cache itself, create the KV namespace, create the binding inside your Wrangler.toml, and off you go, building high-performance applications, caching data to reduce the bottleneck on your database and ensuring that your users have the best possible experience. Thank you all for watching. I will see you in the next video for more serverless Cloudflare fun.